What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanity and my name is Shanks. In today we are going to cast a replay for BFME2 on the patch 1.09 version 2.0 on the beautiful map Udun in a 2v2 situation. Top left side we have the blue man of the best player Bimbi, his ally at the top right side is the blue goblin player Bambi. <laughs> at the bottom right side their opponents is the orange goblin player Inumara and his ally at the bottom left is the red elven player Gustavo. So we have elves and goblins against man of the west in goblins on a beautiful map Udun and you know, this map is like a battle arena, guys. Look at this. We have zero creeps on this map. The only neutral structure you can capture is in the middle of the map, the signal fire. Which will, which is a bit different in compared to Rise of the Witch King, because if you capture this, you actually get a huge benefit. Look at this. One signal fire will give you 25% reduction of spellbook reload time, which is a quarter. That's a lot, especially for the ultimate power points later on. Whoever has it under his control will get a huge advantage. Okay, so we have three farms coming up for the Man of the West player into the farm number four. And his ally is building up two tunnels into the Goblin Cave. On the opposite, opposite side of the map, I can't even talk, sorry for that guys. We have two tunnels into the Goblin Cave. And his ally is building three Malone trees into the stable. Into the, into the Malone tree number four. So, I personally, you know, like the graphics and the animations of BFME 2 the most from all BFME games. I think they have done a phenomenal job to make this graphics improvement as attractive as they potentially could. And the gameplay is also quite fast paced, you know, it's like, uh, like, how can I say? It's hard to explain. The punishment system, if you don't pay attention for a bit, is actually quite big, you know, if you don't pay attention, you might lose a lot of your structures within minutes. And you can also let me know in the comment section down below what you think about BFME 2 on the patch 1.09 version 2.0 versus the BFME 1 you normally and usually see on this channel. I mean, the Man of the West player is actually spamming a lot of farms. We have a stable now for the Gondor Knights. In the meantime, the first Goblin Warrior is coming to attack. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. The farms are a bit tankier in compared to the Goblin Tunnels. The tunnel is the squishiest resource building in the entire game by far. has only 1000 HP. A farm has double the HP, actually. So it's gonna take a little bit longer to be destroyed, but... The resource building in this game are actually quite squishy. It feels like they are made out of, out of paper, you know? If you don't pay attention, you will lose every single one of your <laughs> resource buildings in less than 10 seconds. The Gondor Knights. For the white tree. Also, this tunnel is going to be taken down. It looks like the top side is kind of in a defensive situation. And so far, there is no pressure on the elven play at the bottom left or on the goblin play at the bottom right. The cave pads are flying around and this is the basement floor. You can activate this in your pet switcher which will give you the information to kind of predict the area of defense of your fortress. So everything inside this dark area will be protected by your fortress. The same here and for the good factions it's like that, you know, for the elven faction and for the man of the west faction it's like that. For the, for the evil factions it's always the same, you know, it's always this black area on the ground. One trample should be easily enough to take care of these goblin warriors, they don't stand a chance. But we have Revandal Dancer. And you know what I like about this game the most? I like that levels are kind of adaptive. Look at this, Revandal Dancer gain additional movement speed at level 5. So this kind of rewards the players who are trying their best to keep their units alive and keep them leveled, you know? And I like that personally a lot. And also in compared to Rise of the Witch King, every single unit in this BFME 2 can hit from level 1 all the way to level 10. Remember in Rise of the Witch King, units, normal units, can only level up to level 5, which was always something that I didn't quite understand or liked. Charge them down. Power point wise, we have the far side for vision control. Remember, in BFME 2, the random is unrevealed. Unlike in Rise of the Witch King, in Rise of the Witch King, even if your opponent picks random, you will get the chance to see his faction in the loading screen, but in BFME 2, you can't. But there is a lot of pressure on the Man of the West player, and again, you know, in the meantime, there is zero pressure on the Goblin, zero pressure on the Elves. I will stand by your side. Okay, this farm is going to be protected. Uh, they are chasing, we have Rohirrim up on the field, Master the Rohirrim, as the Orient King would like to say, they cost way more actually, in terms of command points, but, uh, I mean, in terms of money, 
the command points are the same and just like in you know the rise of the witch king they are also able to switch weapons so unlike in bfme one you have not two separate units not the rohirrim and then rohirrim archer on top of that you have actually everything in one single unit if arvin is the first hero and i also like the fact that you know bfme 2 gameplay actually most of the time includes lots of hero action especially when you play any faction but the goblins goblins feel to be the one faction which doesn't require too many heroes but men of the west definitely does you know elves and also mordor with the nazgus on, on the horses pretty solid it looks like the revenant lancer doesn't stand a chance but arvin seems to be a counter and also with level 3 she will give leadership to cavalry only we have infantry now coming from tower guards and soldiers okay all right so there is a tunnel actually from inumara it will be destroyed in the meantime we have a couple of goblins and also one key troll trying to damage the economy they will be able to find the sana level one and it's going to be definitely taken down there is no chance you can defend this actually it's just too weak you know 1000 hp I'm look at this that's what i'm talking about guys i like that a lot if you don't know every single unit has a different type of a damage so for example the pikemen in this case the tower guards they are actually very strong in this game when it comes to damage production buildings in this case for example in this case for example the barracks or the stable they were able to destroy the stable in the barracks so the man of the elven player sorry has lost every single production building very smart move though to get dismounted with arvin this way you get a bit more tankiness against tower guards when you are mounted and fight against tower guards <laughs> they will want to have you lots of action six power points in the bank for the elves we have inumara the goblin player has also seven power points in the bank 450 command points bimbi the man of the west player has 500 command points and three power points collected after the human wood in the rallying call and last but not least we have bambi the goblin player has seven power points collected after the keef pads and keef pads by the way are just so much stronger in this game because they are all they are able to debuff and nullify your damage by 25 and armor by 25 but also nullify the leadership plus the buffs so you can negate every single one of the effects and i like that now we have the spider queen up on the field boys the shelob look at this beautiful beautiful creature <laughs> A um, couple of days ago, I was actually giving it a shot to play for the first time ever the Shadow of War, the Lord of the Rings Shadow of War. And there is also Shelob, guys, you know, <laughs> but she is looking a bit different. I don't know if you guys played this yet, but I, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm still in the learning. I'm streaming that every couple of days, you know, on my Twitch channel. You can also take a look into that if you want to. You can find the link for that in the description down below. Almost level two key troll lots of action but it's kind of back and forth game these games are the games i personally enjoy the most we have legolas level 2 and you need to understand that you know leveling up the heroes in this game are, is way easier especially when they get level till they get level 4. every level after level 4 and 5 is going to be way harder but this is kind of you know rewarding the player who is saving the money to recruit heroes remember when you recruit gandalf in give me to rise of the witch king he's going to be level 1 he won't be able to get mounted on his shadow fangs. He won't be able to have any ability but Visa Blast. That makes him kind of weak for the amount of money you need to actually invest to recruit him in the first place, you know? But in BFME 2, he's definitely not weak. He's very strong, tanky with the shield bubble. And levels up to level 4, in which he can finally mount shadow fangs way, way faster than he would in Rise of the Witch King. Yeah, you don't stand a chance. At this point of the game, he's just feeding Legolas more and more. He has three arches now. He can level up those Lorien arches to a stronger level. This one is under control from the Red Elven player. He is getting more uh, cooldown reduction on his power points from the Spellbook. Inumara was using the Wipemen of Dunland, which are gone by now. They have also half-throw pikemen up on the field. In the meantime, Bimbi, the Man of the West player, has 650 command points, has zero heroes on the field. Soldier battalion standing by. Soldier battalion standing by. Which I clearly don't understand. You know, when you go for the Rohirrim, I think it would be a great choice to actually recruit something like Theodin King or Eoma to spot them with additional armor and damage. But it seems not to be moved. Shilop is level 3. 
and web of Ungol ungoliant is actually pretty strong cripples enemy units in spider webs for 4.5 seconds and drains their life for the duration cheat up his beast on total damage caused to heroes so you can even web the heroes and deny them from moving away it's only 4.5 seconds but it also deals damage I mean, this was, oh, my, my bad. This was a juicy Sonic Song ability from the young Tom Bombadillo. <laughs> Absolute Clown Fiesta. Absolute Clown Fiesta. Human Wood is gonna be used, and Man of the West faction, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, has also land. It's called Human Wood, but it looks exactly the same. It will be covered now. From the Tinted Land, from the Goblin player, Shilop is taking lots of damage, she, got, she gotta be careful, she's also quite vulnerable against Pikemen. There comes Arvin, who has almost the flat. Uh, look, also the abilities from the heroes are also improving. Bonus damage against Black Riders, the flat horses are improved at level 10. So, again, rewarding system for people, for players, who are able to keep their units alive, heroes alive, and also level them up. Okay, we have actually one, two, three Goblin Keeps, double Spider Pit, and only one shield up. Um, Legolas can still be a dangerous threat, even for the Spider Queen herself. We have finally Eomi on the field, but the problem is Eomi and Boromi are only level one. Never mind. Boromi is level two. Level three unlocks the Horn of Gondor. Boom, boom. Okay, so here's heal. Oh, nice micro. In the last possible second, Elma gotta watch out though. Elma needs to be careful. Very nice micro from the Elven player too. Legolas shoot. Ooh, the flat on your face, son. Yeah, <laughs> watch the evil away from this land. Elma has to be careful. If the pikeman gonna hit you a couple of times, you will die. Boromir is gonna blow his horn of Gondor to stun the nearby enemy units, including the units from the Goblin player. Look, they are scared to death. You better be, because this is no rabble of mindless. Soldiers of Gondor, this is the captain of Gondor himself. Theoden King is gonna be the third hero after we have seen Elma and Boromir. But I think at this point of the game you need to, you need to have stronger units or heroes on the field. I'm talking about something like Aragorn, I'm talking about something like Gandalf, you know? The game changing heroes, but it's easier said than done because the Man of the West player has clearly not the money. We have also got killed the Goblin King up on the field. And you see the hero action boys, you know? The gameplay from every single player involves so many different heroes and I love that. That's the main reason why I personally enjoy the Vifimi games the most because it's Lord of the Rings, Beast, right? You see the same units and heroes like in the game. I mean, in this case, Gorkil the Goblin King, you know, or Shilop are not real heroes from the from the films, you know? I mean, Shilop was in the in the, in the Sirit Ungol, but still, you know? She was kind of solo. <laughs> she didn't fight for anybody. Beautiful Arrow Wally. Arrow Wally is also different, has no animation time, it will hit 3 times, but it doesn't leave fire on the ground for damage over time. They got us using the knives to get away, we'll also get 35% increased armor, so when it comes to get in safety, you can always use your knife fighter mode and then run for your life. Okay, in the meantime, oh, but that's a lot of calf, dude. Oh, Gustavo is pinging his ally. He's like, okay, you gotta watch out, my friend. You gotta watch out because if they get the chance to surround your fortress, you might be doomed. Yoma is level 4, has now the Horse Lord leadership unlock for 35% increased armor. The, uh, the leadership system is a bit different in compared to Rise of the Witch King. For example, Tyrion gives you damage leadership and Elma gives you armor leadership. So remember, in Rise of the Witch King, every leadership is the same and it doesn't stack. You can have only one hero with leadership if you have like five of them, the leadership is kind of meaningless because you can't stack it. But in this game, you can stack it as long as the leadership is unique. The name has to be unique. For example, this is called Armor Buff. And from theory, the leadership is called um, Damage Inspiring. So every unique name you can stack. We have Hobbit Special Summon available now for the Man of the West player. In the meantime, the Bambi was going for the Wild Man of the Island, but it's going to be on cooldown very soon. 754 elves. Actually, elves have a lot of command points, and Man of the West player has to do something about it. Level 2 buildings in this game give you 75 command points, 100 command points instead of 75. Gil has been used. 
Ooh, but here's half throw pikeman inside. Ooh, trap! Oh, he's trapped so hard, dude. What a nice uh, timing from the goblin play. I like that. Inumara was waiting for this moment. Very nice. He lost one after all. Hit him almost. But should be able to get in safety. Dude, Legolas from a long distance, from downtown, hitting like a track. You know what we need, boys? <laughs> you know what we need? We need this one. Theodin in nearby cavalry. Gain 99% armor, 25% damage, and become immune to the color rate by trampling. I mean, I like the description from BFME 1 the more, because it says no force can slow this charge. Oh, Gorkil, the Goblin King, running away from a squad of goblins. Quite ironic to me. He's gonna get uh, use the Skull Totem. I will not sail into the West. Arvin is back on the menu. He went for the upgrade on the fortress, that's why they are able to heal up over the, you know, around the fortress. You see the well animation. And also, uh, Inumara was actually recruiting now the Shilob Queen. But again, she's gonna be only level 1. But it's okay, because remember what I was saying earlier, heroes can actually level up in this game way, way faster. So she's gonna be level 1 now, but trust me, level 1, in a bit, in a minute or two, the Spider Queen is gonna hit at least level 4. 7 power points in the bank, 11 power points for Inumara, we have 6 power points for the Man of the West player, and uh, for the Goblin player, Bambi, 10 power points after the White Man of Dunland. I mean, why Shilob at this point of the game? It's simple, because Shilob is countering the cavalry, but there are just too many of them. Oh, she has the flat, she has the flat, she has the flat, dude, you love to see it, man. Oh, Arvin is popping off, actually. Dude, Aragorn would have been proud now. Aragorn would be proud on you, Arvin. You, are, you have done a phenomenal job. I mean, it doesn't deal too much damage to them. It doesn't kill them, but it disables them. It knocks them down on the ground. They cannot move. And then your follow-up later on with Shilob and Bunch of Pikemen. And look how many Pikemen he has on the field. Like, the cavalry cannot play the game. And also, Inumara was using the spider allies special summon from the Spellbook of Goblins to actually encounter this. But I think the Rohirrim, they are kind of fine. Old ground stands to make them a bit more tanky. In this game, you know, you need to play around your battle stances very, very often. When it comes to deal damage, you want to use the aggressive stance. When you fight or run away, you can always use hold ground stance to become a bit more tanky, more durability, and survive a bit longer. But this army looks scary to me, dude. Farsight has been used. Legoras with the Mirkwood Elves, Prince of the Mirkwood Elves, and Bunch of Mirkwood Elves. They have crazy amount of DPS. They are also look a bit different in compared to Rise of the Witch King. In Rise of the Witch King, you don't have this many units in one battalion from the Mirkwoods. Okay, they gotta surround this. Mist is gonna be eventually used. No. Arrow Volley! Nice one. Find the location, camp it, and then he was using Arrow Volley to kill all the surrounding units. The elves are in a phenomenal spot. Level 5 has the terror, and that's gonna cause fear. No fear resistant yet for the army, and that gives you the opportunity for a juicy and beautiful trample into the Mirkwood archers. They are very strong in terms of DPS, true, but they are very weak in terms of defensive capabilities, and they can't handle this much burst from the Rohirrim. Oh, Haldir getting, you know, <laughs> hit in the face from Boromir. But Elven heroes are genuinely speaking like quite fast heroes. So normal infantry heroes from the Man of the West faction shouldn't be able to catch to them, but Shilob definitely can. And it looks like she's trying spear throw from downtown. They are trying to finish off the prince, but Shilob gotta be careful because she's also very vulnerable against pikemen. It's too risky to commit further and just kill back at this point of the game. And eagle special summon is available now for them. For them, El boom! The watcher in the water. Eagles will be special summon next, and you see the late game fiesta moment? That's kind of crazy, right? In late game, you have so much fiesta in this ha in this game. Like, you have so many power points, so many heroes. Chilop got killed by the giant eagles. One power point in the bank after the eagles. They are getting closer and closer to the point in which they can finally summon their 25 power points. I don't know if the game is gonna last that long, because this attack can actually be quite effective. Level 3 farm with the Grand Harris, you can see the glow animation, will be definitely taken down, and that means you will now lose, in total, 
275 command points. That's a lot of command points. And even the stable level 2 doesn't stand a chance. The pikemen deal bonus damage to the production buildings. The eagles are coming too to support to push off the goblin. Terror will be used. No fear resistant yet. Green is only level 5, but they killed Shelob successfully. That's good. <laughs> Elma, the Shelob Slayer. Very smart move from the Elven player to focus on the farms. Especially level 3 farms are so rewarding when you can destroy them, actually. We have 8 power points for the for Enumara after the Watcher. And on the other side, Bimbi, the Man of the West player, is up to 13 power points now after the Hobbit special summon. And his ally is up to 5 power points after the Watcher. So the man player is kind of committing fully on the on the cavalry, right? He never built up an archer range all game long. He never recruit gondor archers or rangers at all. Like never went for some more impactful heroes, like for example Aragorn or, or Gandalf, you know? Especially against clumped army like that, uh, you know, this Gandalf can be very effective. I mean, at this point of the game, maybe not that much, because Legolas will hard focus him down whenever he sees him. And remember, Legolas is highly leveled, has now a crazy amount of DPS. And Gandalf might not be even able to get into the range to blast them away with the ability, but still, you know? Farsight has been used on the archers, and besides giving you vision control, also extends your range by 35%, which is quite a lot. So, you, especially for the elven archers, they have already a long range. 35% increased range can actually make them shoot out of your vision. You can't even see them, you know. Oh, I heard something. Oh, yeah, the ends are going to war. Tribute. <laughs> this is gonna be the choice. It is not time for me to leave Middle Earth. Do -do -do. Tree beard is coming. The Hobbit special summon has been used. Beautiful trample. You see plus 12, plus 12, plus 12. That's, comes, that's coming from the outlaw leadership from Irma. He needs to be level 6 for that one. Bro. But it's a very rewarding hero. It's a very cost efficient hero after all. And again, leveling up the heroes is way, way easier in this game in compared to Bifmuan and also Rise of the Witch King. Legolas is level 9. Level 10 unlocks the Arrowwind. And he's gonna be dead very soon. Like, leveling up Legolas, not even in the campaign of BFM1, is not very hard. Because he can always keep staying in a safe distance and then shoot, 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 shoot all the time. Eventually have enough DPS to kill everything he touches. Shilop is back on the menu, boys. Level 4, almost. Level um, 6 unlocks the Poison Stinger, which can poison the units or heroes and cause them to take damage over time. Oh, that's gonna be a dangerous situation now. I mean, here's a couple of hobbitses on the bottom side, but the question is, can you defend this? There is three beards, you gotta take him down the ASAP. He has a bunch of Rohirrim up on the field with heavy armor from the blacksmith. So they are quite tanky, but are they tanky enough? There comes the arrow volley, boys. You saw he summoned the rangers and they got literally one-shotted from the arrow volley. The animations are looking dope, I gotta say. They are trying to commit on Treebeard, they will be able to take him down, the Fortress should be in a safe spot yet. Um, but it, dam it got damaged a little bit. 13 power points, almost 14 power points in the bank for the Elven player, he's getting closer and closer for the, for the Flood, or for the Sun Flare from the Spellbook. But for now, the blue Goblin player and the blue Man of the West player seem to be in a good spot. You see the Forge Blades and Heavy Armor on them, and that should be like an alarm signal for you to watch out. You don't want them to give, you don't want them to get anywhere close to your fortress. If they get close to your fortress and if they surround it, a GG well played, you know? You will you will lose it in a few seconds. Cloudbreak is available. Cloudbreak is actually pretty good in this situation because you can stun them for a long duration, 15 seconds, 10 seconds actually, which in RTS games is a really long time. And then you can use your heroes or your pikemen to finish off as many of them as you potentially can. And the army doesn't have fear resistance yet. And another reason why you should recruit Gandalf. Because Gandalf can also provide uh, fear resistance. Oh, Cloud Break. Hold on a second. They have also Forge Blades. Oh, nice wombo combo. Boom. You saw? Like, that's a full combination. Everything is be being blown away only for this Rohirrim from the Man of the West faction. So he used the Cloud Break. He used Tom Bombadil for the, for the Juicy Zeplas. And he also used the arrow volley. Everything was blown away from the spell book beside the eagles, which are still on cooldown. But the man player will be able to save the majority of the army because they are quite tanky with the heavy armor 
in the armor leadership from Ilma. They will just keep shooting, level 10. You can't get any stronger. In the meantime, we have a small attack with the Wildman of the Island. We have also the Pillage ability, which is like a passive thing. Every time you damage buildings, you steal money from it. The level 3 tunnel is going to be slowly but surely taken down. That means the Goblin player won't be able to send reinforcements to this area anytime soon. But there comes the commitment. A swarm and a squad of the Goblin faction. The int mood is going to be the target. Remember, tree build has been taken down before. It means all oh, the flood will be used to wash the units away but they don't take too much damage flat uh, you know when you use flat it's not about the damage you deal it's about the disabling effect crowd controlling effect you can actually chaos on enemy units which can buy you a bit more time but huge attack uh, that's gonna be actually quite successful this should be the barracks you need to take down it's a level two barracks the end mode is gonna be rebuilt and also this army you know everybody at this point of the game has upgrades everybody is rich Oh, the Balrog of Morgoth. I didn't even see that. Pew! The VIP in this game causes heavy damage on the enemy structure. And you can use it every 5 seconds or so. That means only with the VIP you, you should be able to deal a lot of damage to the buildings. And when you play with me to yourself and you summon Balrog, you should not try and bother to try to take down the fortress. It's quite tanky, you know? Just take down the surrounding buildings if you can. 16 power points for the Man of the West player. 10 power points for the goblin player Bambi. He's still far away from his spellbook to 25 for his own Baldrock special summon. And as you can see in Bifumi 2 on the patch 1.09 version 2.0, also evil factions have access to the heal, which was always like a downside, you know, in compared to the good factions, evil had like almost no sustain. Beautiful trample though, very well done. But there comes the eagle summon for the second time. Now we have a really scary situation because the elven player is also only 14 power points away from 25. Yes, the Rohirrim are taking care of this Alvin units, but there are eagles you cannot kill. How you want to kill the eagles? You have no DPS. I mean, he has a couple of goblin arches, but I don't think two of them can actually damage those eagles as much as they would like. But the fortress can do a good job here, I think. Yeah, he knows that. He's going to peel back. Don't need to feed power points at this point of the game. Arvin is coming. Level almost 8. And look at this half troll marauders, boys. Forge blades in scavenged armor. They look sexy with the golden armor. It looks pretty nice on them. HE Lop is level 7. Um, the Balrog was actually able to deal so much damage to the Man of the West player. The War Chant. To be honest, the animations are so different that sometimes when you cast a game like this, you can't tell what is actually <laughs> going on, you know what I'm saying? It looks pretty insane to me. Tom Bombadillo has also leadership here, the armor inspiring, and that's different by the way. There is an armor inspiring and there is an armor buff. So they are also different, named differently. That means you could, you know, obviously stack them. Cloud Break. This time actually from the Man of the West player. Uh, I don't know about that to be honest, because it will delay your 25. Your off breakers or your earthquake will be delayed now. And in lead game, in very lead game, your 25 power points are actually game winning. You have seen how much devastation the Balrog could cause only himself. Degolas is the MVP of the game for sure. Like he has killed so much, dude. Holy guacamole. Chilop is level 7. Level 10, Elma. But the more important hero is definitely Theorin. I think he lost him. Unfortunately, unlike in BFMU1, you cannot click on the hero list to see which hero is not recruited yet or which hero is being currently revived. You can't do that. <laughs> it's a, you know, it's a newer game in compared to BFMU1, but has some futures missing what are existing already in the big scheme in Battle for Middle Earth 1, which is kind of, uh, kind of lame. Level 8, Arwen. Aragorn would be proud. Oh... Oh, this guy might actually go for the big boy. Like, you see the Dragon Nest upgrade on the Fortress? Then you might assume that there is going to be a big boy. Even though I don't know if, how effective the big boy is going to be, the Dragon Lord, obviously, against Elvin Archers, you know? <laughs> the, especially Legolas, you know? Level 10. Oh, the Watcher in the water for the second time on the Elvin Archers. The Flood Fiesta <laughs> is happening. Arvin is poisoned. She might be taken down. Aragorn is not there to serve the Swift. 
to save her. I can't even talk. Arwen has been indeed taken down. Double watcher in the water. Look at this. <laughs> the watchers. Watch out. The watcher. Okay, Shilop. I, I feel like Shilop is just lurking around, running around from one side of the map to the other side of the map without doing too much. And I'm missing out the Shilop from this dude. I mean, he went for the Shilop at the first place, but I think he lost him and never revived her. Not him. It's a, it's a girl, you know? Shilop. Look at this. And he's looking confused and surprised at the same time. Cloud break for the second time. Tom Bombadilo and Spiders. They don't give him the chance to commit. I'm waiting for it. Boom! Santom Bombadilo. But they don't take damage at this point of the game, dude. They don't take damage at all. I mean, they can't move either. You know, they are stunned from the cloud break. They are stunned from, uh, I don't know, fear from Shilov. They are knocked down on the ground from Tom Bombadilo. They have crowd control like crazy. The CC duration seems legit. And he lost a lot of his Rohirrim. Even though he committed fully. In the meantime, look at this. The siege has begun. The Ents are going to war. It is likely that they are going to their doom. And what I also like in this game is the different design of the Ents. Look, there is a fat end who had like a rough time in the in the pandemic, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and remember the Man of the West faction in this game has no rebuild. Unlike the dwarves and men in the Rise of the Witch King in this game, Bifumi 2, only the dwarven faction has access to that. Oh, let me close. Nah, it's fine. It's fine for now. The Alvin Wood from the from the Alvin player. I mean, it's kind of sad though. <laughs> he had at the end of the day he got glorious charge, but he lost too many Rohirrim at, uh, around this side, you know, to the cloud break and stuff. Now the big commitment. They won't take damage from Arrow Volley, guys. Look how tanky they are, you know. With the scavenge armor, they are beasting. Uh, Rangers could be a special summon from the Man of the West player, but I don't think it would do too much. If you don't know, the second you lose your fortress, you cannot use any power points anymore. You can't. Like, it denies you the full access. The end uh, is th throwing a rock that's not a regular end, that's three beards, and it's gonna finish off the Man of the West player fortress. And again, everything is grayed out, as you can see, and the Man, man player cannot use any power points anymore. That's why keeping your fortress around and protected is essential in this game. Like, that's their win condition now. I'm kind of curious why this guy actually went for the for the uh, dragon nest and never recruited either the big dragon, the fire trick, or the dragon lord. Kind of questionable. Look. Look the range, dude. I think the tree beard can actually... What is this? Uh, you can mount him? Really? You can mount him with, like, hobbits? Didn't know that. I mean, graphical-wise, a lot of improvement has been done, but in a 2v2 situation, this fancy stuff looks a little bit confusing, in my opinion. Like, like <laughs> we had also the chance to implement many of these visual things into the VFMU1 patch 2.22, and after seeing them in the game over and over again, I feel like they don't fit in perfectly, you know, for, for a game like Battle for Middle-earth, which is made in 2004, it's a RTS genre, you know what I'm saying, and Lord of the Rings Beast and this fancy stuff like a Star Wars or Starcraft action doesn't look very good. It does, I mean, it looks good, but it doesn't fit into the PFME scene, in my personal opinion. And you can also let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about this fancy stuff. You know, the arrow wind from Legolas, the fancy blue arrows flying around. I don't know. You let me know. The blacksmith has been taken down. That might be the last stand. I mean, he has money uh, to buy the fortress, but I don't know if he has a build or not. Like, I cannot tell you. The eagles got special summon for the third time. A back and forth came all the time, and I think um, the cavalry overcommitment kind of was not a great choice. I think you needed something else. Maybe Gandalf. I mean, I'm, maybe, maybe I'm biased, you know, maybe I'm biased, maybe I'm saying Gandalf, Gandalf all the time, because I'm in love with Gandalf, that's my most favorite hero in all BFME games, but I feel like when this game goes that long, and you get Gandalf on the field a bit earlier, you could use easily level him up to level 5, get mounted, then you use Cloud Break to stun them, go for a juicy with plus, you know, all that crazy stuff. 
I mean, he has almost nothing on the field. He has only 200 command points out of 700. In the second, you lose your la last production building. It's over. I think the barracks is the last building remaining from the Man of the West production player. And he has been now defeated. Now it turns into the 2v1 situation. And I don't think Bambi has the chance and the tools to actually pull it off. Nah, he's gonna demolish everything. He knows it's over. It's over indeed. GG well played, guys. If you enjoyed this one, if you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. And also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.